In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Photo to create these YouTube thumbnail designs. And the design assets that I'll be working with for this demonstration, I have opened up in separate tabs already. I'll be using this image as the background. I'll be using this image as the subject. And then I have the Affinity Photo app icon, which I'll be using as well. Now, these two images here are premium stock photos that I purchased, so I can't share copies of these directly, but I will provide links to them in the description of the video in case you want to obtain copies of them. And to get us started, I'm going to open a new document. So I'll come up here to File, and I will choose New. And I want to size my document at 1280 by 720 pixels. Mine already has that inputted by default, but uh, if yours doesn't, just make sure to type that in there, and then click Create. So now I'm going to paste my background image in here. So let me grab my background image. Uh, let me unlock the layer. I'll right-click it and go to Copy. And then I'll come back into my workspace and I'm going to paste this in here by pressing Command V or Control V if you're on Windows. And let me grab my move tool now and move this around and size it as needed. Now, when I'm scaling this, I'm going to hold my shift key to lock the aspect ratio. And I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I'll move this over and I'm even going to rotate this a little bit. So I'll rotate this like that and I'll put this up over here. Now, the way that I'm planning this is I want the subject to be over here on the right third of the thumbnail design, and I'm going to place him over the center of this light burst effect. So let me scale that up a little more. And then I'm going to grab my subject image. Now, before I can use this image, I have to delete the background from the image. So let me unlock the layer. Let me rasterize, rasterize the layer by right-clicking on it and going to Rasterize, and that will allow us to remove the background. And now I'm going to create a selection around my subject by grabbing the Selection Brush. And I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys to increase and decrease the size of the brush. And I'm just going to start painting over my subject to create a selection around them, as indicated by this Marching Ants outline. So I'm going to keep painting over the subject to create a selection around him. And if you accidentally go over the lines, you can move this, you can remove or erase from the selection by holding your Option key or the Alt key if you're on Windows. So I'm going to hold Option and move that in like that, and it puts it back. Now I have to move it out a little more, so I'm going to adjust my brush a little bit. I'll make this a little smaller. There we go. And now I'm just going to go around the edges here and fill in my subject with uh, the selection. And once you're finished creating your selection around the subject, I would recommend clicking on the Refine button up here just, just to see this red mask to see where the crop is. It, it's a pretty good indicator of uh, where everything is. If I zoom in here, you can see it did a pretty good job of grabbing the strands of hair. So this is a pretty clean crop right here. I like how this looks. If you need to adjust it further, you can use the foreground and background setting here to add and remove from the selection. And as you do that, the mask will update, the red mask will update as you paint on top of it. But this looks good as it is. I'll click Apply. And now I have to invert this selection because it's not the subject I want to delete, it's the background. So let me create the selection around the background by going to Select and choosing Invert Pixel Selection. And now I could just press delete on my keyboard and then remove the selection by going to select and choosing deselect. And if you zoom in, you can see the checkerboard pattern here in the background if you did everything correctly. So now let me grab my move tool. Let me right click on the subject and go to copy and I'll move him into my workspace. So let me come in here and I'll press command V and then size this up as needed. Again, holding shift while scaling to make sure that you lock the aspect ratio. And like I mentioned earlier, I want to place him on the right third of the design. There we go. And I may have to move my background image to accommodate that. There we go. So as it is right now, the subject looks pretty flat up against this background here. It looks like two separate elements, like it doesn't really blend in. If I come over here to the main design, you can see I updated this design so it pops a little more. It has some more color, and there's even a pink glow reflecting off of him uh, based on the overall color theme of the design. So let me show you how we can do that. I'm going to select the subject layer, and I'll come up here to Filter, and I will choose Sharpen and go to Clarity. I want to bring this all the way up to 100 and click Apply. And then I'll apply that one more time. I'll go to Filter, Sharpen, Clarity, and click Apply. And that just makes the image pop a little more. So now I'm going to add a Vibrance Adjustment layer to the image. I'll come down here to the Adjustments icon, and I'm going to choose Vibrance. 
And I'm going to take the vibrance icon and click and drag it on top of the subject layer so that it's only applied to the subject layer and not the entire image. And once I do that, I'm going to bring the vibrance all the way up and I'll take the saturation and boost that up a little bit as well. And that's just going to make the design, it's going to make the subject look a little more colorful. I'll close out of that. And now I'm going to create a pink light glow going on top of the subject. So to do that, let me select the original subject, right click it and go to duplicate. And now I'm going to apply an HSL adjustment to this duplicate copy. So let me go back to my adjustments menu, choose HSL, click and drag the HSL icon on top of the subject so that it's only applied to the subject. And now I want to choose the red channel. And with the red channel selected, I'm going to take the hue slider and bring this right a little bit until the subject starts to turn a pinkish shade. And then I'll take the saturation and boost that up as well. And I'll leave the luminosity right where it is and I'll close out of that. So now I'll take that layer and I'll set the blend mode to darker color. I'll bring the opacity down to about, I'd say about 35. And now to make the pink come out a little more, I'm going to add a levels adjustment. So let me come back over here to my adjustments and I'll add a levels adjustment. And I'll take that levels adjustment and place it on top of the layer. And you can use the black level to add some intensity to it. And you can use the white level to decrease it from the lighter areas. So I want the natural skin tone showing through. I just want the pink highlights to show in the areas where there's pink lighting. So this is what the white level uh, is good for. The more you increase the white level, the more that effect you get. So I'm going to place this right about there. And that's a pretty good happy medium right there. I'll close out of this. And now I'm going to create a glow going around the subject. So let me select the original subject layer and I'll come over here to my quick effects tab. If you don't have a quick effects tab, just come up here to window and look for quick effects in this menu. And if it pops up as a separate menu, you could just click and drag it into the dock. Uh, we're going to be using these a lot in this tutorial. So I would recommend having this in your dock. Uh, once that's applied, I'm going to choose outer glow. I'm going to increase the radius a little bit to create the glow. And I'm going to change the color of this glow to a very light pink shade for the overall color theme of the design. So let me open up the color bar by clicking on that. And I'm going to choose a pink shade, something lighter, maybe not all the way pink, but like a lighter shade of pink. That looks pretty good. I'll leave that as it is. And that part's done. So now I'm going to create some text to go with the design. So let me come back over here to my workspace. I'm going to grab my text tool. Uh, if you can find it over here in the toolbar, it's right down here, the artistic text tool. You can also access it with the letter T on your keyboard. And let me click and drag to create some text. So for this, I'm going to write design. Let me press Command A to select all the letters and I'm going to change my font to something else. The font I'm using for this is Serona. Let me try that again. It didn't pull it up. There we go. And I'm going to make this white. And I'm going to decrease the spacing between these letters or the kerning as it's called by placing the cursor between two of them and holding my option key and using my left bracket, my, not my left bracket, my left arrow key. Uh, so if you're in Windows, that would be Alt. If it's Mac, it's Option. So just hold your Option or Alt key and just use your left and right arrow keys to adjust the spacing between these letters. We want it to, we want it to look like it's nice and evenly spaced out. There we go. Now I'm going to take this and duplicate it. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click and drag this down and then hold Shift to lock it onto the vertical axis. And I'll change this one to Thumbnails. And again, I'll decrease the spacing between these letters as well using the same method, holding Option and using the left and right arrow keys. And I'm going to scale this down so that it's the same width as Design. So let me select Design, and I'm going to copy to the width by pressing Command-C, and then I'll select the thumbnails text, and I'll make that the same width making sure I have the lock applied here so that it locks the aspect ratio. And then I'll command V to paste the size in there. And I'm going to make this a different color other than white. So let me make this a light shade of blue just to go with the theme of the uh, design. And now I'm going to add the text down here that says affinity photo. So let me grab my text tool again. And this time I'm going to use all caps and I'm going to write affinity photo. 
I'll press Command-A to select all of it. I'm gonna make this text white again. And I'm gonna use a different font for this one. For this one, I'm gonna use Montserrat. So let me grab Montserrat. I'll use Montserrat Black. It's a heavier weight font. And I'm gonna scale this down. Let me center this next to the other item. And I want the text to be about that big, but I also want it to occupy all of the space down here. So I'm gonna add spacing between these letters. Let me go back to my text tool. Let me select all of the text, and then I'm gonna hold my option key and use the right arrow key to space out all of these letters. And then I wanna make sure that this text item is the same width as these items. So let me come back over here into my width and just Command V to paste that in there. And there we go, that's what I'm going for. So now let me move this up a little bit. I'm gonna hold my shift key while I do that and move these up just, to I, just so I can adjust the spacing between them vertically anyway. And now I will select all of them and I can scale this up as needed, scale it up or down. Now, if you notice, I sheared the text a little bit so that it's going up. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna bring my cursor over here with all of the text items selected. I'll bring my cursor over here until it turns into a shear icon. And then I can, let me try that again. And then I can shear it up like that. Now, the problem I have at this point is that the text is getting lost on the background of the image. So to fix that, I'm going to add a black outline going around it. So let me select each text item and come over here to the quick effects menu. And I'm going to choose outline. I'll increase the radius. That looks good right there. I'll do the same thing down here. I'll select thumbnails, add an outline, increase the radius. And then I'll do the same thing down here with Affinity Photo. Add an outline and increase the radius. And just to add some more separation between the text and the background, I'm going to apply an outer shadow as well. So let me add an outer shadow. Let me bring the opacity all the way up and I'll take the radius and bring that up as well so that we have a shadow coming out of the back of the text. And I'll do that for each of these text items. I'm gonna add a shadow. And another thing I should mention, if you zoom in on these letters here, you can see I have a little bit of a pink glow coming off of these letters. I have a little bit of a blue glow coming off of these letters over here as well. So let me show you how you can do that. I'm gonna select the text item and I'm going to apply, let me minimize these. Now I'm going to apply, um, I'm looking for inner shadow and I will use a pink shade for this one. And I'm gonna move the offset down so you can see where it's located within the text. And once you're happy with its location, you can increase the, radi the radius a little bit just to give it a blur. And then decrease or increase and decrease the uh, opacity over here as you need it. I want a very, very subtle glow. So this is just a personal preference thing. I'll leave that as it is there. I may even bring that down a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing to this text item. I'm gonna select that. And now I'm going to apply an inner shadow. I'll make this a darker shade of blue. And I'll move the offset of that as well, just to see where it's located. And then increase the radius. And there we go. So now at this point, I still wanna add some more separation between the text and the background. If you notice in the original design, there's a lot more drop shadow going behind the text. So to increase the drop shadow even more, I'm going to select all of the text items and group them together by pressing Command G or Control G, if you're using Windows. And I wanna apply an outer shadow to the group now because now the software recognizes this group as its own object. So with that selected, let me come over here to outer shadow. Let me increase the opacity and then increase the radius. And there we go. That's the effect I'm going for right there. I want a lot of separation between the text and the background. Um, and at any point, if you wanna go back and edit this, what I would recommend doing, come back over here to your Layers tab and just expand the group. I wouldn't recommend ungrouping this text because if you ungroup it, you're gonna lose that drop shadow. So instead of ungrouping it, I'll just expand the layer and I'll come in here and make my adjustments as needed. For example, I think the, uh, the inner shadow on the thumbnail text is a little too harsh. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. And now I'm gonna bring the Affinity Photo logo in here. So let me open that up. Let me select this. Let me make sure I have the layer unlocked. I'll right click this and go to duplicate, or not duplicate, copy. 
and I'll come back in here, paste that in, scale this down. And I wanna place this right over where the subject is pointing. So I'm gonna put that right about there. And I'm actually gonna move the subject over to the right a little bit because it's getting a little cramped in here and it's too much open space over here on the right. So let me select the original two subject layers and I'll just move them over as needed. And now I'm gonna move the background image over as well. Now I'm out of space over here. I'm about to run out of space. So I'm just gonna scale this up. There we go. And now I'm gonna apply an outer glow to the logo to this app icon because I want this app icon to stand out a little bit. So to do that, let me select the object and go to quick effects and I will choose, I'm looking for outer glow. Bring that up. So now for this final step, I'm going to apply copies of the app icon in such a way that it looks like they're flying out of the light burst. And to do that, I'm going to apply a perspective and a motion blur to each of them. So let me grab some copies of the app icon. I'm going to right click this and go to copy. I think I have it already copied, but I'll just copy it again anyway. And then I'll come in here and paste it by pressing command V. And now I want to rasterize this. So I'll right click it and go to rasterize. And let me scale this down a little bit. And now I'm gonna change the perspective of this by coming over here to this tool. Um, if you come over here to the left-hand side of the toolbar, you can see there's a mesh warp tool. If you hold a click over that, you should see the perspective tool under there. So I'm gonna choose perspective and I'm gonna take these handles and bring them in like that just to create a perspective of this image. And once I'm happy with how that looks, I'll click apply. And now I'm going to apply a motion blur to this. So let me come over here to filters. I'll go to blur and I'm going to choose motion blur. And I want the motion to be following the right hand side. I want it to be look, I want it to, the, the blur to look like it's going that way. So you can adjust that using this dial over here. I'm going to set mine to zero degrees or maybe a little more than that because it is tilted a little bit and you can change the intensity with this slider right here. So I think that right there is a good intensity. I'll leave that as it is and I'll click apply. And now I can rotate this around and adjust it so that it looks like it's tracking with the light burst. So I'm gonna put this copy over here. Let me uh, rotate that a little more and I'll move this down. You can layer objects down beneath other objects by clicking and dragging the layer. What I like to do though is hold command and press the left and right bracket keys or if you're on Windows, that would be control. So I'm gonna hold command left bracket key to move that down. And this time I have to make the perspective going the other way because I wanna use it for this side. So let me move this down a little bit. So there you go, at this point we are finished. We have created a thumbnail design using Affinity Photo. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.